one of the things about being a DIYer that I love so much, it is the thrill of the hunt. And that's what I'm going to walk through today is show you um, how I've begun myself. I'm pretty much an absolute beginner at learning about electrical diagnoses in cars, using an oscilloscope and things of that nature and checking out, for example, doing like very simple tests on the um, CAN bus network and uh, <clears throat> also other tests at the data link connector. So here we are in my all data account for my 2010 Buick LaCrosse. Let me blow up this um, schematic here. And as we can see, um, again, most, some of you watching this may already know this, some may not, but again, I think one of the best ways to learn something is to also be able to show other people and explain it to people. And again, if anybody has any constructive criticism, please leave it in a comment. I'm always open to learning. All right. So one of the things to notice here, if you are a beginner just like me, is that pin four, five, and 16 and pin six and 14 are always going to be uh, consistent across cars. Might be a few other ones that are consistent, but these are the main ones. For example, pin number four is a ground, but it is a ground to the chassis. Pin number five is a ground, but it's a ground to the uh, in normal, in most cases, a ground or signal ground. Pin number six would be your uh, 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 CAN bus uh, uh, high speed data, although I can't remember which one. And pin number 14 would be your other uh, CAN bus data circuit. Um, so a GM calls it GM land serial data. Some other places you might just see CAN bus high and low. So um, these are the ones here. Um, pin 16 is always going to be pa battery positive. So it's going to go for 12 volts. So if you really, for example, you could go in and just check test voltage, just sticking your uh, voltmeter to pin four and 16, for example. And we're going to do that, by the way, with the um, volt, with the um, voltmeter. So I just wanted to show you just like how you learn about getting into these things. They seem a bit intimidating and a bit um, obscure, especially if you're a person like me who mainly has done a lot of mechanical work and you really want to dive into um, diagnosing and working on electrical faults yourself because my idea is that, well, if you Google cars, the best thing to do is just buy used cars and fix them. I mean, that's the best way to do it. So this is one of the things you can look into a DLC data link and learn what's on your DLC data link. That's not the typical, uh, stuff that's at pins four, five, six, 14 and 16. Because all the other pins, most of them can be used by the manufacturer for whatever they see fit. All right. So next thing, um, we're going to take a look at the CAN bus with the oscilloscope. So we go over to this right here. Um, we're just going to look at this first chart here. Um, I can look at either one of these and then uh, some of these other buses. This is the low speed right here and the um, uh, LEN network right here. But. If we just check it out the bus, I just, I just want to show you that what's out here if you're really into looking for something like this. So another thing we're going to check, we're going to check the resistance on the circuit. So everything on this uh, thing, so I'm going to just kind of give you a quick overview of what I understand here. The data link module is here. This is pin six right here, which goes to pin number 42 on my ECM. And this is uh, data link connector 14 right here, which goes to pin number 55 on my ECM because I have an LLT engine in my car. So these are what we're going to probe here to look at the CAN bus network, which is uh, pins number four and 16. And um, one of the things you should know that's a test you should always, when you're, and you got to do this test when your car is asleep for, for resistance. And um, know that what you're supposed to get is 60 ohms because you have 120 ohm resistor here. And typically you would have 120 ohm resistor here at the at one end. You got one damn, that's what you call parallel. One is at one end at the engine control model. One is all with the other 120 ohm resistors all with the other end in the parking brake control module in my car. So that's how I learned that some cars it might be in the, the, the um, second in 
120 ohm resistor might be saying your ABS, for example. But again, anyway, these are things for you to learn about your car. Another thing I learned here is that here we have 260 ohm uh, resistors in series. So their sum is 120. But from what I read and what I thought is that both of them supposed to be like a solid, like this one is 120. This is 120 in sum. But this could be good for diagnosis. So say, for example, if you tapped into it and and um, it might help lead you in the right direction. I'm not sure, like in a clear way how, but I w it would make sense. So either if you came to this park and control module and you test it out on this end, the resistance versus test it out on that side of the module, you may get different numbers and it may help you to narrow down is your park and brake control module causing faults in the can or something like that. Again, this is just a learning process. I'm not saying that's entirely correct, but but again, it's something for you to check into if you're a beginner, absolute beginner, just like I am. So that said, we're going to go right on out to the car now. I'm going to use my breakout box and um, we're going to use our voltometer or multimeter to test voltage and resistance. And we're going to use my oscilloscope um, to look at the CAN bus network. All right, guys, we're out here at the car. For the, first of all, I just want to say, for those that don't know what a breakout box is, basically what a breakout box is, it's, it's basically if you plug into your ODB2 port, all 16 pins will be listed on this breakout box. And you can just then use your banana clips or just some probes and stick right down in there and to test. So let me back up a little bit, get a little bit closer here to show you. Um, for example, you see pins four and five is ground. You see pin 16 is battery positive. Pin 14 is can low. Pin six is can high. And they pretty much are going to be the same in most vehicles. Probably looks like pin maybe four and two might be the same, maybe typical pins as well, but at least not in my car here. So with this go diag box, um, this will be in the description as well. If you're interested, I highly recommend getting one, although you can crawl under there and probe back probe the um not necessarily back probe but probe the actual odb2 port but also if you turn it on what it does is it shows you the active ports in this car right now everything is asleep in this car except for obviously the voltage because the grounds are working and the um and the positive um battery positive is working. So at least just by turning this alone, you can say, all right, at least I know that power is coming to my ODB2 port. So um, let me grab the multimeter really quick and we're gonna do a couple of quick tests. Okay, so you can see that I have my uh, multimeter set to DC. So we're gonna go ahead and stick a probe into the ground, I'll stick the other probe into the positive. And as you can see, Hold on, let's see here, because sometimes you got to kind of push them to the side. Yeah, we're getting 12.6 uh, volts, which is about right, because, again, a good battery should be around 12.6. All right, so now the next test you can do is take these out and uh, set your multimeter to uh, ohms, and then you take one in and put into CAN bus low, and take the other lead and put it in the can bus high and it should read uh 60 ohms let me yeah about 60 ohms i'm running about 62 ohms so that means you can say that okay the positive controls are coming to the D, the dlc connector correctly and at least you are measuring the correct ohms at this time All right, guys, I just want to show you the setup here and um, what's going on. So first of all, I got the Pico scope here. This is the model uh, 2204A. Um, these are about $165 US. And I also have a Handtech 1008C that's about $100 US. And for a beginner, I could recommend both of those. But if you ask me which one would I choose, I'd choose the Pico because obviously Pico is Pico and the software is much better. But again, it's not saying anything bad about hand tech. They're both, there'll be links for all this stuff in the description. So, all right, 
So I got this connected up. As you can see, I've already been taking some readings here. This CAN bus signal I have here is a little bit noisy, but um, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to connect it and to capture this data. So the first thing you're gonna want to do is wake your car up. I mean, it, I don't know how fully it has to be um, awoke, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, uh, let me see if I can get this thing to cut on here. I'm going to cut this on and I'm gonna um, shut the door so that way it won't be beeping too much if I can get it to stay on here. For some reason I can't get my car to go on here. But anyway, that's, um... oh, no remote detected. Let me go get my key really quick. All right, as you see now that the uh, pin, the blue lights are lighting up and that's for pin six and pin 14. And we are going to plug uh, on the positive leads into the uh, pin six and pin 14. And we're gonna plug, piggyback the negative, um, the negative uh, uh, terminals on the lead into the ground. So since I'm only got one hand, I'm gonna stop the camera and I'm gonna set that up, but I'm gonna show you exactly what I did here. Okay, so here's the setup. As you can see, I got one lead right here in the pin 14. The other positive lead right here in the pin number uh, six. And I have the two uh, negative uh, terminals right here piggybacked into the signal ground. So we're gonna come out here and here, and as you can see, I um, have everything connected. The signal's a little bit noisy, but the one thing you want to notice is that the uh, voltage uh, in the middle here is about two and a half volts because, again, when you check your um, volts when it's active, you should be the canvas high up top here. For example, the top of this uh, signal here should be around, I guess, three and a half, and this bottom should probably come in at I guess like less than, you know, much less. I'm not sure exactly what, but um, but as you can see, these what's going on? We're wearing this probably tell it that's the end of a data packet somehow, uh, which is my guess. My signals are a bit noisy. I'm not sure why, um, but let's zoom in a little bit. Oops, I think I just hit something wrong here. Let's go back here. Hold on. First of all, let's just stop it. And then let's just uh, blow something up here. Let's see what this looks like here blown up here. Now yeah, let's move this out of the way here. As you can see, they're pretty much mirror image like they should be. And um, again, but it's still quite noisy. I'm getting a lot of, uh, I forget what they call this echo, I guess, here. So these lines probably should be a lot straighter. I'm not sure if it has anything to do with how I have the equipment set up or how well, my equipment is just setting this, such as my breakout box and that sort of thing. So that, you know, this is a learning process for me. So I'm just showing you what I'm learning here. I'm really enjoying learning this here. And um, yeah, so let's go back to one to one. That's going to put it back on the screen. And we can hit, hit this right here. Um, probably got my triggers not set straight. That's that's one thing, again, I'm learning. But again, my, my, my whole goal of this was to test some things through the DLC connector and to get a CAN bus signal, then move on. Again, like I said, I have also used my hand tech to capture some data as well. So with that said, um, I hope you guys really enjoy seeing this. Uh, you guys take care and I'll see you in the next one.